on YouTube, friends and family. Hey, it's Friday. Finally Friday. Everybody's working for the weekend, right? I know I am. I am on my way to town to pick up a, to rent a floor sander. Uh, a random orbital floor sander. I am very excited to see this new red pine flooring all sanded up. <clears throat> Also, I thought I would address... Oh. I just love that view over that pond for some reason. I, I hope you do too, because I show it almost every time I go to town. Um, oh, yes. Anyway, about expansion and contraction um, of the pine boards. You know... The narrower the board, the less expansion and contraction happens. So cer certainly if I had one foot or 16 inch wide boards, I would definitely need to leave some room for expansion. In my experience, uh, especially with, you know, this tree was just standing alive last March or February. Uh, so there's still probably a little bit of drying that's occurring. So in my experience, if it's not, kiln dried lumber it's probably still going to shrink some so I'm totally expecting that this is this wood is still going to shrink therefore I don't really need to worry about expansion and contract and it's hard to plan in a gap how do you keep a gap even you know it's really just a difficult thing to do certainly if you're doing decking in an exterior application you know decking when it gets really wet it's going to expand but for interior uh, conditions typically don't leave the flooring exposed to that much moisture. It's part of the reason I put down that rosin paper though to help provide a, a, a buffer, <laughs> um, if you will. So anyway, good question. I forget there was at least two of you that asked it, so I thought it was on my mind. I should address it. I'm going to do a much longer question and answer at some point this weekend because I know there have been so many great questions and comments that I just have not had the time to reply to and I really want to. So anyway. my station wagon. This Volvo is the greatest car, man. Otherwise, I would have had to take a truck, you know, but that thing fits back there very nicely. Like I said, you need to set the heads of the nails so that when you're sanding, you're not sanding the tops of the nail heads. Because the nail heads will sand off and then you don't have any holding power. And then of course it degrades the sanding um, pad. <clears throat> I use the fattest diameter nail set I can find because otherwise it tends to deflect and slip off the nail. Basically I have like, hundreds of nails to set. I don't want to set them too much because, you know, the holding power is all in the head. Once you actually break the surface, you lose like 30 to 35% of the holding power of the nail. So setting the nail already is compromising that fastening mechanism that I want to happen. But, you know, it's just part of the system in this case. All right, 
I'm gonna get systematic about this. man I don't like being on my knees for that long Whew. all right so next step basically is to sand this puppy up now I got to do just a little quick rearrange in here pull in the floor sander somehow that thing is heavy um, and get this show on the road It also, so it orbits, it's a, an orbital sander, but it's random. So it, it doesn't just do circles, it does circles and vibrates at the same time. There is a uh, fiber mesh pad to which these um, sanding, sanding sheets stick to. You work up through all of these grits. This is 20 grit, this is 35, I think, or 36. Uh, this is 60, this is 80, this is 100. That means per square inch, there are that many grains of mineral uh, glued to this paper. So the 20 grit per square inch, 20 grains. 100 grit, which is where I want to end up for the final sanding, 100 grains per square inch. I'm not going to use this. Look at that. That is super, super aggressive. I've never used the 20. I may, I may even skip the, uh, what is this? The 36 and go directly to, to the 60. That's what I'm going to try. See if that'll work. And, uh, and cause you know, each time you sand with a coarse grit, you have to follow up and sand again and again with finer grits right up through. So if I start, with 36, you know, I, I can't skip and go to an 80. I've got to go right up through. So I want to try to minimize the number of steps I have as well. All right, that's the primer on sanding. Whew. Just set it down, turn it on, and walk away. I'm going to start down there, though. first uh, grit of paper, I decided actually to go down to the 20 grit because it just wasn't aggressive enough with the 36. So I just need to get that corner where you are and then I'm going to break because I'm uh, getting sick of this.
up. I just have to pull this sander out of the house on my fancy planks. Load up some tools and get that sander back. What do you think? All right, it's over, it's done. Well, it's not done. I gotta drop off that sander, but I'm loaded up, packed up, and ready for the weekend. And it's a beautiful sunset, too. Thanks for coming with me on my day at work today.